Welcome. Hey guys, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome to the grand tour of Tekton Zoo. If you've ever wondered whether you can build an entire zoo out of modernist architecture and do it in franchise mode, I've spent the past 16 months trying to find out. Let's jump in and check it out. All right, here we are at the entrance to Tekton Zoo. So I built this entrance way back in May last year. Uh, it's had a bit of a improvement since then. We got some decals, more plants. I got some banners going down the street towards the zoo. But other than that, it's pretty much unchanged. Let's get inside. So this is the zoo entrance uh, here where the guests actually come in. They enter through the coaches back there. And I got some uh, sort of posters of habitats in the zoo here. Stole that idea from Drac. He did this with some zoo posters in one of his zoos that we toured a couple of months ago. And this leads us into the Grand Plaza, which is the sort of centerpiece of the zoo. I wanted a really big open space that the guests could step into first before they explore the rest of the zoo. So the rest of the zoo is through archways in the Grand Plaza. You can see a coastal exhibit over there. Uh, we've got the forest over there. And right in the middle of the Grand Plaza is Penguin Palace. This is the first habitat we built for the zoo. This is heavily based on the architecture of the Tecton Group who designed various habitats in the UK in the 1930s and basically introduced modernism into zoos at that time in London Zoo, Whipsonade Zoo and Dudley Zoo. And so there is a lot of white concrete and modernist architecture in this zoo. That is the main sort of inspiration. We've got this big underwater viewing area here for the penguins. And then we've got some exhibits scattered about as well, like there. Uh, and then a lot of the habitats in this zoo have viewing on different heights, which is something I really like. Uh, but yeah, let's go up to the viewing gallery. Got some stairs here, which will give us a different view of the penguins. I wanted the guests to be able to see them underwater at the front. And then on land and on the surface of the water up here. So on this side, there's stairs on both sides, but on this side we've got the nesting area. Uh, this was inspired by Edinburgh Zoo. So if we look down here, we've got some these little rings. They collect the pebbles there and then make their nests here and lay their eggs. Or they would do if there were any <laughs> eggs in Planet Zoo. And there's a lot of penguins in here now. I started with six and I think we've got about 18 now. Lots of little babies. And you also get a really nice view of the rest of the zoo from up here. We can see into the forest area. I've got the names of the animals that are in each area written on the walls as well. We've got a desert area away down there. Um, we'll go into the forest, but first let's have, just have a quick look at the exhibits. So there's two of these exhibit pods. Uh, I know a lot of people don't really like the exhibits in this game. Obviously the 4x4 boxes are pretty limiting. But I quite enjoy the challenge of using them, so I always just try and make a really interesting building for them to be in. So this is the tree frogs exhibit. We've got some layman's poison frogs here. And then down here we've got the red-eyed tree frogs. Always lucky to spot uh, <laughs> any of these. Oh, there's one. And yeah, I thought this was a nice way um, to present them. I've got this area in the middle which sort of joins the two the habitats together visually with the sign as well. Let's head on into the forest and see the first of the main areas. This is the first area that we built um, for the zoo after the entrance and the Grand Plaza. Each entrance has its own sort of name and then an animal statue that represents the um, area. So I built this zoo mainly by biome rather than by uh, geographic location. So I thought that gave me more freedom in what animals to choose. Got a nice waterfall there as a centerpiece for this area. And then you got roots on the floor as well to show you where to go. So down here we've just got a really simple habitat for peafowl. The main reason this is here is that the path leads you into um, probably the best view of the Flamingo Lake. So as you come out here, 
you can then walk on and see the Flamingo Lake, possibly from its best angle. I've just redesigned this a bit. I made this first part of the lake a lot shallower so that the flamingos can stand and wade around as well as just swimming. It was all really deep when I first built it. I didn't really get how the water worked in the game back then. Uh, and then if we continue round, we come to one of the latest additions to the forest, which is a exhibit for the fire salamanders. Um, we've actually got a red one in here. We almost certainly won't see him. But um, I didn't realise they had colour morphs. I thought they were all black and yellow. But one of them gave birth to a little red and yellow dude. Um, so we have one of those now. I'll try and find him later and maybe put a, a cinematic in. In case you haven't seen those. I can't even see any of the normal ones. <laughs> Classic Planet Zoo exhibit problem. Let's continue round under this big willow tree. I really like the willow trees in this game. They're really cool. We'll come to the zoo's first uh, sort of food stop, the Forest Cafe. This is based on a restaurant in Dudley Zoo that was designed by the Tecton Group. Uh, it's pretty much an exact replica on the outside. And then inside we've got food and drink. I built this before the, uh, before the restaurants were added to the game. So it's just the little boxes. And then we have some axolotls, which is the, the most recent thing to be added into the um, forest area of the zoo. Can't see any of those either. I did have one of the white and black speckly ones born recently. So again, I'll try and find him <laughs> and uh, get some shots of that. But the, the reason that the Forest Cafe is here really is so that you can sit here and then get a really nice view of the Flamingo Lake. Let's continue round to the next part of the forest, which is the Clouded Leopard Foothills. This wasn't originally my plans. I realized I had some space left over. So I was trying to work out what animal I could squeeze in here. And the answer to that question was one clouded leopard. <laughs> so there's only one in here. There wasn't room for two. This is a franchise zoo. Um, so all the animals are at or very, very close to 100% welfare. So all the enclosures are the correct size according to the game. Um, and often check out the animal care manuals as well to make sure that that is correct. There he is, having a little sleep on top of his shelter. And yeah, this is the first time I ever used mesh. Um, took a while to get my head around it. It's not particularly complicated, this habitat, but just trying to get mesh to curve around the top was uh, pretty much the limit of my skills back then. I've got some more complex um, meshed habitats in the zoo now, which we'll see later on. This is the Binturong habitat, again, heavily inspired by Tecton. We'll take a look at that in more detail in a second. Um, but firstly, I wanna check out the House of the Red Panda. So this is another habitat that's on multiple levels and it's based on a modernist house, which I think is in California. I can't remember where I saw it. Uh, just a normal house for people. I thought it would be uh, a cool idea to turn it into a house for red pandas. Why not? So we've got some upper viewing here. There we go see them in their garden there's a climbing structure here when they're very occasionally if they ever climb it you can see them through there and then if we go down and round we can see them on the ground if you're new to my channel and you want to watch me build this zoo then we've got a whole series on here I'll put a link to episode one at the end of the video and in the description below so we've got the sort of front of the house here and this lets the guests see them in their garden but uh, on the, the same level of them through glass rather than from up on the balcony i've had to limit the guests pretty heavily to shoot the video because of the frame rate so I, we've only got a thousand guests in the zoo normally i have three and a half thousand so it's not gonna be as many um peeps knocking about but it'll help keep the frame rate up a bit and yeah, that's the House of the Red Panda. I think this was probably my favourite build when I first built it. I was pretty proud of it. Let's move around now and check out the Binturong habitat. So we've got a little area at the back here that is indoors. Uh, this zoo's set in the UK, I haven't already mentioned that. So obviously we get hot summers and very cold winters. 
so all the habitats need some sort of indoor habitat to keep the animals either cool or warm depending on the um, season so we've got a little peek through window here and then the main viewing is around here this is heavily based on Tacton's penguin pool at London Zoo with all the white concrete and the metal poles and in the zoo's main colour scheme which is white with black and orange highlights so they can climb these vines they can climb this tree and then they've got another big climbing structure at the back there where they do their thing where they um, hang down by their tails oh wow this guy might be about to do it let's check it out I love it when they do this it's so cute ah no he's going the other way all right we'll uh, let him off for some reason this bar across here is the only one that they do it on they never do it on the vines or anything else maybe because it's flat I'm not sure let's check out the final habitat in the forest uh, oh we've got custom signs everywhere just dead simple ones just to sort of brand it with the zoo and get the sign in English and Latin instead of uh, Planco and Latin. But yeah, the final habitat in the forest area is Lima Heights, which is where the zoo keeps its ring-tailed lemurs. And it's another um, multi-level habitat. Uh, the zoo's up on the workshop as you watch this, uh, but one of the reasons that the individual habitats haven't been put on the workshop is that I use paths a lot in my builds so you can see here we've got these stairs going up here to the top and then we've got paths going all the way around it as well so it makes it really difficult to um, get my stuff onto the workshop so I haven't really bothered with any of the um, individual habitats so if we go around here we've got a viewing gallery here where we can look down and see the lemurs on their little platform. Somehow the keepers get food up here. I have no idea how. Normally they refuse to put food anywhere that's more than about a foot off the ground. But this works, don't ask me how. No idea at all, but I'm very happy that it does. Gives you a really good view. And let's head on down and check out the underside. So we've got a view here where you can see them when they're eating in their main sort of forage box here and now let's move on into the next area of the zoo which is the desert so there's a big entrance to this which you can get into from the grand plaza but you can also get in there directly from the forest i've tried not to dead end anywhere in the zoo so there's always a route that the guests can take without having to sort of double back on themselves too much so the main habitat in the desert area of the zoo this is probably the smallest area in the zoo is the meerkats So we've got a lot of meerkats in here now. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to put the zoo's name and logo as part of the actual habitat. So in the center of the habitat, we've got the tecton sign and the meerkats can climb up that ramp and stand on top of the T where that little fountain enrichment is, which is really cool. Again, I'll try and get a cinematic of that. We've got the Reptiles of the Desert exhibit over here, which combines three different um, desert reptiles, as the name would suggest. And again, it's just an attempt to make the exhibit boxes look cool. Always just put them in an angle and then build a, a building around them. So we got some uh, blue tongue skinks there. And then a couple of snakes and some healer monsters as well. And then if we go round to the other side, there's an animal talk point there as well. Loads of drinks and power, solar panels everywhere. Obviously with this being a franchise zoo, you need a lot of that stuff. So we have Gemsbok over here. More of an African influence in the architecture um, in this build for obvious reasons. And then finally in the desert, we've got the Temple of the Scarab Beetle. Again, trying to make them look interesting. I put two uh, Scarab Beetle exhibits next to each other, basically. And then built a building around them. And these are one of my favorite exhibits in the game. I wasn't particularly excited when they announced they were adding a beetle. <laughs> but um, when you actually see them rolling their little balls of dung around, 
it is really cool. When they're doing that, <laughs> they're a lot more interesting than some of the exhibits in the game. Let's move on to the first build that sits outside of the Grand Plaza. This is where the, the rest of the zoo comes in. We'll come back to the other side of the Grand Plaza later on. Firstly, we've got the Cheetah Conservation Center. So this building, which I really like, this is still one of my favorite builds in the zoo. This is based on a building in Denmark, um, which sits on the coast. I'm not really sure what the building actually is for, but it is absolutely stunning. And uh, as soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted to somehow get it into the zoo. So this part of the zoo is sort of the modern part of the zoo. Um, the Grand Plaza is all the stuff from the 1930s. This is the stuff that's been built a lot more recently, which gives me a lot more freedom to do different kind of stuff like this. So a different color scheme and some wood in the build. I built this for the Kangathon um, stream and uh, sort of charity weekend where we were raising money for um, a cheetah conservation center over in South Africa called Kango Wildlife Ranch. Um, so loads of creators got together to, to build stuff for that and raise money. So we've got some details of that there. And then hopefully some really good views of the cheetahs from in here. Not sure where they are at the moment. There we go. So yeah, the, the concept for this is that inside you've got this sort of panoramic view of the cheetahs with the glass windows going all the way around. And then there's fencing around the outside. So there's just loads and loads of opportunities to see them. This is the biggest habitat in the zoo by quite a long way. I can't remember how many thousands of meters it is, but it is really big. I want them to have room to run around. We've got another rare African animal in here, the Goliath frog. Even these guys are tough to spot considering how big they are. And yeah, I was really pleased with this building when I finished it. We'll see the other side of this later. And now we're gonna move on into the land of the reptiles. So we got this sort of sculpture garden here, which I built to bridge the gap between the Grand Plaza and the rest of the zoo, and the little information center in there. So yeah, let's head into the land of the reptiles. The first thing that we have in here is a little space filler habitat for the Galapagos giant tortoise which I built into the back of the walls of the Grand Plaza. I like it when you've just got a little space to build in and you've got to make something fit in there and look good. So this is what I came up with. It's very simple. Um, there's only one of them out. Oh, okay, here comes another one. These babies will be in the zoo forever because <laughs> they take so long to grow up. There's more viewing for this uh, in the Grand Plaza as well. We might see that later. Let's carry on into the Crocs and Caimans exhibit. So we've got the saltwater crocodile habitat here. Again, I wanted a massive underwater viewing window. This is one of those habitats where I'd love to see one in real life like this. It is a really good view. I really like that. We've got some uh, food stuff and a little nursery for the baby crocodiles around that way. Uh, around this way, you can see the enormous Komodo dragon house in the background. Uh, we'll check that out in a minute. But firstly, we've got the dwarf caiman habitat here. This is designed to sort of mirror the crocodile habitat, but it's a bit smaller. And instead of being an underwater viewing window, um, it's filled with water just up to this level so you can look in and see them we just had some babies so we've got a lot in here at the moment and then the final habitat aside from the Komodo dragon in Land of the Reptiles is the swamp this is for American alligators this was definitely my favorite build that I've done so far when I built it. Had some issues with it though, being in, in franchise mode. Originally there's a path here which ran all the way through the habitat and out the other side. 
but the guests kept running away screaming and they got halfway down it because despite being perfectly safe I think their hitboxes were clashing with the hitboxes of the alligators or something so I've had to redesign it a little bit since I originally built it so now we have a viewing area here and we can see the gators there's the big one we got some babies as well I like how stripy they are they were my first babies I had breeding turned off for these guys uh, oh I had them contracepted rather um, there was some exhibits over here uh, bullfrogs and terrapins but I've turned that now into um, an exhibit for baby gators uh, implied obviously um, that would be like a VIP experience or something where people could pay to get into that bit and access it from the other side but yeah I still really like this even with the slight redesign I think it just feels really swampy in here which was uh, the idea let's check out the Komodo dragons next this is another one of the more modern buildings this is based believe it or not on an art museum in Sao Paulo in Brazil um, I remember seeing a picture of it once and thinking that would make the perfect reptile house because it is suspended in midair and it's got these giant sort of legs that hold it up and the legs are on the side and they sort of sprawl out like a reptile and just as soon as I saw it it reminded me of a, a big lizard or a crocodile or something um, so I decided to make this the Komodo dragon house so this took some building because we've got a little sliver of terrain right up there that the animals are on and then all this blank space here so you can walk under it to get to the primates area over there I've got this little coral exhibit here with uh, an implied exhibit for eagle rays but let's go up into the Komodo dragon house itself and check it out I've only just finished putting all the plants into this area when we built the final habitat in the zoo um, last week I really like how it's looking now let's get a little sneak peek into our panda trail there that's the exit so as we walk in here this is where the Komodo dragon lives uh, we did have two um, but one of them died of old age recently so we've just got the one in here now um, <clears throat> I don't know where he is really shouldn't lose uh, oh, there he is <laughs> a lizard of that size but yeah this is a really simple habitat on the inside because these guys have real problems with traversable area I made this way bigger than I thought I needed to and then as soon as you put like one tree in <laughs> that's it the traversable area is gone so it's pretty bare bones inside but I think with the viewing window at the back and the view out over the top of the rest of the land of the reptiles I think it kind of works there's a nice view here into the next area of the zoo that we're going to go into the primates area but yeah let's get out of here and move into the primates area so this little coral exhibit it's just a few workshop items i think one of them's made by drac um, one of them's made by somebody else um, there's a link to every workshop item in the zoo in the description below if you want to check any of that out and obviously a link to the blueprint for this zoo itself if you want to check it out and walk around it but let's head on into the primates we've got this big entrance arch here this is heavily influenced by the Jurassic Park gates if you haven't guessed and I like the little uh, chimp statue up there and again this area trying to make it look different to the others so this is all wood chippings and heavily planted and then with the big um, buildings sort of standing out that is the Capuchin Tower we'll take a look at that in a second but we'll have a quick look at the outdoor area for the chimps in here I've put like a ruined version of the entrance arch there with ropes for them to swing on and they do climb up there there's a couple of climbing panels as well seem to be having a fight over there I've got a couple of males in here and they do they do fight but yeah let's check out the capuchin tower this is a, a real zoo habitat believe it or not it was the great ape house at Kansas City Zoo um, a classic 1960s modernist monstrosity which I absolutely adore <laughs> um, it's not there anymore um, it's been torn down and replaced by something else this it was about this size and they used to hold I think gorillas orangs chimps loads of different species of monkey it's it did not have a good reputation in terms of animal welfare 
but what a beautiful building. So I decided to use it and just have capuchins in it and give them a huge amount of space. So the whole of the inside of this building is given over to this massive capuchin habitat. And they can climb all the way up to the top. And since the last update, they're doing a lot more climbing. But yeah, sometimes I see five or six of them up there running around, which is really cool. It used to be one or two at most when I first built it. There's also a view here into uh, one of the other habitats, our gorilla habitat. And we'll look at that in more detail later on in the tour. There's our silverback. This area here, um, we'll see more of this in a second. I've just put a sort of display in there to make it look nice, but that's reserved for if Frontier had any really small primates into the game, tamarins, marmosets, or even just some more smaller primates like the capuchins maybe. Just want um, some of those in there. So I've left that area empty just in case. We can always come back and put a habitat in there. So we've just got a sort of coming soon sign at the moment. Let's move on into the latest habitat in, that's the indoor viewing for the chimps, by the way. Let's move on to the latest habitat in Tecton Zoo, the Panda Trail. We've got South American Giants up there, which we will look at after this. But firstly, we'll head into the Panda Trail. So this I just built a couple of weeks ago. Um, it is a Chinese themed trail featuring giant pandas, Asian small clawed otters, and a couple of uh, Drax bird props as well. So the first thing we come to is the otters. Oh, we just saw a panda up there as well. That's the whole point of this habitat, that you can see both animals at the same time in a sort of panorama. But yeah, we've got the otters here. The large area of water for them. And then round here, we've got an underwater viewing window. Ah, good timing. So you can come down here and see them swimming about. I was so happy when they added these otters into the game. They're my favourite otters. I like the giant otters. They're very cool. But these guys are just super cute as well. And then round here, we can get up into the panda habitat. So there's loads of different viewing areas in this habitat. One down here. And then as the path goes up here. And that's the exit we just saw from the Komodo Dragon House. But they tend to spend most of their time in the top part of this habitat. I've built little peek throughs as well for kids. So that if you're only small, you can uh, see into the habitat. And I also put a uh, drinks uh, counter up here as well to try and drag guests up here. This, I think this is like the furthest point in the zoo from either of the entrances. So it, it doesn't get very busy. And because I've just limited the number of guests that we've got in the zoo, there's nobody in here. <laughs> but there is normally a, a few people up here. And you get a nice view of the pandas. This amazing netting is made by Haribo. This is a workshop item. That's way beyond my capabilities. But yeah, I really like the vibe in here. Mixture of the soaring white concrete that I like to use, and then a much more modern uh, 21st century zoo style um, rock work and planting and immersive exhibit with loads of different viewpoints and things like that. And before we leave the Panda Trail, I just want to say a big thank you to a few people. Firstly, JP and BZ for their constant encouragement and inspiration in the 16 months that I've been building this suit. Paulsley for some sage words of wisdom when I very first started my channel. Plastic Swans for leaving the first ever comment on Tecton Zoo. And finally, you guys for watching. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. It's been a hell of a lot of fun. But yeah, that's the, uh, the Panda Trail. We'll move on now into South American Giants. So this is probably the biggest um, area in the zoo in terms of how much work it took to build. There's a, a lot going on here. 
We've got loads of different animals and loads of different um, viewpoints and features. So we start off with the capybara here, which I just managed to squeeze in when the wetland pack came out. You can't really build a South American giants area without these guys. I really like this little uh, sort of hot spring that they've got. On the other side, we've got giant anteaters. And there, go all the way up here. It's based on Machu Picchu, this uh, area. Can't see them at the moment. And then over here, we've got the giant otter habitat. So there's a lot going on in this habitat. We've got a little pool for them here. Their indoor area there. And then there's a slope behind this, which takes you up to the giant otter sky bridge, which they can run across into uh, we've got some in here. So we've got some deep water for swimming here. They're all in there. And then they can climb out of here and go along this glass tunnel. And the guests can watch them do that into another water tank here. I've got food in the one we just saw and then uh, some food and some enrichment in here to give them a reason to sort of go between the two and they do that quite a lot I'll, again I'll put that in a cinematic if they don't do it now oh I think one's about to get up here there we go come on little guy he seems a bit hesitant That's so weird normally they just run straight across there I don't know why he's doing that weird <laughs> weird thing that's planet zoo for you and um, finally we've got the land of the jaguar really big habitat for jaguar with this raised viewing this is the only place you can see them from didn't put in any other viewing here ah oh, good timing so we've got a black jaguar there and then there's um the traditional jaguar and a couple of babies as well at the moment I've put bamboo all the way around this so you don't really see outside of it. There are no elephants in this zoo, by the way. That's the talk point. But I like how that skyscraper there just sort of peeks over the top of it. And yeah, that's uh, that's the South American Giants area. We've got the Capuchin Tower in the background as well. They are from South America, so that's sort of part of this area and part of the primates. Sort of bridges the gap between them, which I like. There's a little route through here. I almost dead-ended this. <laughs> I was trying not to, but I just about managed to squeeze a path in here. It's a bit uh, a bit smaller than I would like, but there was no way I was going to move that capuchin tower. <laughs> I do not have a spare like month to try and work that out. So we can walk through here into the next area of the zoo, which is Tecton Mountain, where we keep a few different animals that like habitats in or around mountainous areas. So I'm going to have to get stuck in some bushes and trees there. There's not much room. We get another view of the capybaras from the opposite angle here. So the first thing we come to is the zoo's restaurant, which we'll check out. Got a little fountain here as well. This is like a very small version of the Grand Plaza. This is um, the zoo's exit area which obviously in Planet Zoo also functions in an entrance area, which is good because it stops the guests from all being bunched up at the other end of the zoo. So this is the Lookout restaurant, um, and it's called that because it gives you a view of the Zhivansky's horse paddock here. So let's go in and have a look at this. So we've got a restaurant here, and I stole just Goron's idea from St. Reginald Zoo of putting the restaurant in backwards so it looks like an open kitchen and then putting some of the um, food kiosks in front of it as well. We've even got a little uh, a beer stand here in case you get thirsty want to try any uh, Tecton IPA. And then we've got all the restaurant tables around there as well. Uh, again, because I've limited the guests, uh, doesn't seem to be very popular today, but <laughs> nothing I can do about that. We've got some tables outside as well for when the weather is nice. And then down here, we've got the gift shop. 
um, and this is where the other sort of entrance spawner is hidden so that we can get guests in here inside this is all sort of workshop items mainly by shifty um, so there's just so many good gift shop items on the workshop I didn't feel the need to spend any time making my own especially as they probably or let's face it definitely wouldn't have been as good as shifty's but let's get back to the animals so we'll go to the uh, Zhivolsky's paddock first of all this is one of the biggest habitats in the zoo as well figured with them being horses they're gonna need a lot of space and it's pretty simple we've got this viewing area for the guests there's paths here hidden under all this plaster so that the guests actually do come up here and then you can look out and uh, see the horses that up there is snow leopard summit possibly the most ridiculous habitat in the zoo i think <laughs> i went pretty over the top with this one well to be fair i'm not sure it's any more realistic uh, or any more ridiculous than the um, capuchin tower and i didn't even design that so <laughs> maybe i can let myself off but similar to lima heights we've got uh, ground level viewing all the way around there for the guests and same on the other side and then we've got a path here leading up to the top viewing and there's a feeder in here as well so that the snow leopards come up here when they're hungry and eat that and the guests get a very good view through this one-way glass a lot more mesh in this habitat and again you can walk around here and get various different angles looking in I don't seem to want to come up here at the moment another nice view across the zoo from up here Uh, let's go down and check out what it looks like on the inside. There's one, just climbing a tree. Put trees at the bottom that grow up through the holes in the concrete above so they can get up and down and some ramps as well. Snow leopards are so cool. And this brings us round to the two final habitats in the mountain area for Japanese macaques, um, or the snow monkeys as they're known, and the red crown cranes as well. Red crown cranes is another habitat that I just crammed into a tiny little area that we had left at the back of the gorilla habitat. And in the macaques, we've got a, uh, a snow machine, <laughs> which sort of works. I've hidden one of the new enrichment items in there so kids will come along and hit the button and snow will shoot out of the cannon um, obviously there is no correlation between when they hit the button and when the snow comes out but um, you'd need mods for that but yeah I really like this habitat I think it's pretty they've got their two hot tubs and then they've got some of the cyanide climbing stuff as well and then this little garden for the cranes around here We've got a baby at the moment, they are so cute. I went all out with the planting on this habitat. Trying to make it as lush as possible. And this leads us back round into the other side of the primates area. So we've got the Siamang Island here. Try to make a classic monkey island habitat and make it look realistic. We've got the moat and then all the Siamang climbing enrichments around here. There's one now. They do look very cool when they swing off these, especially at this front bit here. And then back around here, this is the indoor part of the gorilla habitat. They need a big indoor space. They spend a lot of time indoors, so you don't want to skimp on that. There's also, I forgot about this, there's also a um, upper viewing, which is supposed to be sort of a VIP experience kind of thing. And yeah, that's the primates area. Let's move on now and take a look at the night house. This is a big old slab of brutalist style concrete, which I was really pleased with when I finished it. I'll take a look at that from up above. 
And yeah, here we are at the entrance to the night house. So let's go in and take a look around. Wait for our eyes to adjust and for me to change Planet Zoo's lighting. <laughs> yeah, I really like it here at night. Used a lot of sort of purpley lights to give it that night house kind of feel. Um, all the habitats are in a circle around the edge. So we've got fennec foxes here. There's one now. God, they're so cute. And then we've got both the desert and the forest giant scorpions. And two exhibits in the centre here. And then we've got aardvarks at the back here. There's a couple of them now. No, all three of them. Their burrow there. I've got the burrow cam on, but I've got a bug in my Planet Zoo. I think it depends what graphics card you have, but I can't turn burrow cams on. It makes all the graphics in the zoo flicker, um, which is uh, not good. So the burrow cam is there, but it's, uh, it's not turned on. And finally in the night house, we've got the Chinese pangolins. Again, another really cute animal. I just love the atmosphere in here. When you get the lighting right, I think it really does feel like a nocturnal house. Right, let's get back out into the daylight and check out the next part of the zoo. So this little area is sort of not themed around the around the Cheetah Conservation Centre. Just a couple of builds that I really wanted to do. So we've got an Arctic Fox house here. This is based on an aviary I found in um, Wellington Zoo in New Zealand that I really like the look of. Sort of combines the, the modernist style that I normally use with a more of a rustic style with these um, sort of, I don't know what you'd call them, cobblestone walls and stuff like that at the bottom but yeah i just thought it was a really cute little habitat and then here we have an actual tecton build this is the uh, black and white rough lima house based on tecton's old gorilla house at london zoo i really like this we've got some of bz's climbing enrichments in here if you haven't downloaded those off the workshop uh you should <laughs> there's loads in there they're so good and they uh, especially if you have a YouTube channel they save you lots of time when you're making builds <laughs> yeah I'm a big fan of this habitat in real life and I like how it looks in the zoo as well and this brings us back past the uh, cheetah conservation center into the Grand Plaza again um, we've also got the zoo's map here it's been fun watching this grow since I started the zoo. It is now finally complete. Um, this is where we've just been. We have visited the entire zoo with the exception of the jungle and the coast down there, which is where we're gonna go now. So those are the sculptures and they frame the um, Cheetah Conservation Center and the Komodo Dragon House in the background is why I put them there. I like it like that. But yeah, let's go and check out Tecton Coast. So the centerpiece of this is an enormous habitat for the California sea lions. Big viewing window here. You can see them all swimming about. And then we've got two paths here. One takes you to underwater viewing for African penguins, and one takes you up for a different view of the sea lions and the African penguins as well. So we'll head on up here. This is the African penguin habitat. And we've got some animal talk points as well. So yeah, these little cuties are in here. the babies of the African penguins are possibly the cutest babies in the game and then okay so we've got a talk going on then we've got a view of the sea lions on land here as well and a nice view across the rest of the zoo 
I'll show you the um, African penguins underwater viewing in a cinematic. Uh, meanwhile, we will make our way around to the final area in the zoo, Tecton Jungle. So here we are at Tecton Jungle. The symbol for this area is the orangutan. Uh, there are none in here <laughs> because they are rubbish in this game. Um, if Frontier ever add appreciation to them, which I really hope they do, um, then I will definitely consider adding them here, maybe in this central habitat. I'd really like to do that. But this is one continuous raised path uh, based on a path in a park in China that I saw that I really liked. Um, we've got a mixed habitat for tapir, babarusa and peafowl in the center. And then behind us we've got the red rough lima habitat. This was the first thing that we built in the jungle. I still really like it. It's such fun watching the lemurs in this game. Again loads of climbing. They can climb up into that tree there go down through these vines to the rest of the habitat. Oh, there we go. And that stretches around here. Takes us to an exhibit for the giant leaf insects. These are the hardest to see in the game. The last thing Frontier needed was an animal that's... Uh, oh wow, you can actually see one. Normally really hard to spot, being uh, camouflaged as a leaf. And then we've got the sun bear habitat. This is pretty weird habitat, but I really like how it turned out. We've got these three towers for the sun bears to climb up on. And most of their enrichment items are up here as well. Got a nice waterfall in the background. And then away behind that tower is their indoor area, which is really large, but is off limits to the guests so we can't see that from here and then the final animals in the zoo are the pygmy hippos so they live underneath this waterfall oh we've got a little baby on this so cute munching away on a melon there um, and their habitat goes around here and they've got an indoor area there river flows all the way around it come, goes under the path and comes out in this water feature here yeah I'd really like to put orangs in here big climbing structures if they ever add brachiation to them so they work a bit better uh, then I'll definitely do that you can see into their little indoor pool here as well I've sort of made this as ugly as possible really reminds me of sort of 70s uh, zoo habitats that I've seen in places like London Zoo and things like that obviously they don't make them like that anymore which is good but um, I wanted something that brought that to mind in this zoo and we just got um, a few sort of food and drink places here and that's the whole of Tecton Zoo so it's been uh, what like 17 months since we started this zoo I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone to watching this. Uh, it's been incredible to see this series grow from getting sort of 11, 12 views an episode to getting, you know, 1, 2,000 views per episode. That's been really cool. Thank you so much for um, sort of joining me on this journey. I'll be back very soon with one or maybe even two new zoos. I'm still finalising my plans. But until then, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.